in this magic bag that we got from the Charlotte Running Company, we got the Hoka Mach 6. Now, lined up over here, we have a bunch of other shoes in addition to the last generation of this shoe, the Hoka Mach 5, which feature a foam called ethylene vinyl acetate or EVA. Now, the Hoka Mach 5 has been criticized, it's been lambasted, and the Hoka brand in general. The name has been besmirched because of this foam, ethylene vinyl acetate, more commonly known as EVA. Now, what all of these shoes here have in common is that they are EVA based shoes. So the primary offender of this EVA category would be a shoe like the Saucony Endorphin Shift. EVA is a traditional foam. Whoops. It's firmer. It's not the most exciting. It's not going to give you something like this Hoka CLOX1 here, which is super bouncy. That has a Piba foam. No, this is not bouncy. It will give you a really structured, rigid ride, and it will also last forever. And the thing about EVA, though, is that it was created in the 1970s. So this is not a new breakthrough. Now, despite all these shoes having EVA, there are so many different ways that you can process a foam. And so what we have on the top layer of the Mach 5, you can see ProFly Plus is what Hoka brands this foam. They don't brand the regular EVA. This is a super critical EVA. And that means it's gone through a process where there's gas injected into the midsole. That makes it a little bit lighter and bouncier. Everything good that we want in a training foam, but it's not gonna add as much weight or rigidity to the shoe. And so in the Mach 6 here, they're going with the same super critical EVA, the ProFly Plus for 100% of the midsole, and they're getting rid of this bottom layer. And so yes, there's tons of other shoes on the market you can see here that use EVA, but for some reason, Hoke is the brand that gets the flack for it. So with the Mach 6, our main question we're gonna be answering is, can a shoe that has 100% of this EVA foam compete with all of the other great training shoes and racing shoes on the market? Because this guy is supposed to be fast, but also comfortable and also good for everyday use. So let's get into it. All right guys, so I am amped about the Mach 6 because the Mach 5 was a shoe that I used a ton last year in my half marathon build. You can see this outsole got absolutely destroyed. There's no rubber on this version. Mach 6 is gonna have it, but it was light, it was fast. It was everything that's awesome in a summer training shoe. And I'm really hoping that the Mach 6 can repeat that. Now let's open this guy up. I'm not gonna lie, I did get a sneak preview of the colorway in the store. I usually don't look, but I saw I flashed, they flashed it. And let's see, ooh, this is, this is even cleaner than I remember. Wow, I don't think we've gotten a pure white colorway like this before. This thing is gonna get absolutely wrecked in our Charlotte winters. Good thing it's turned to spring. So first thing I'm noticing, this EVA foam, this ethylene vinyl acetate, it's feeling really similar to the A6 FF Blast Plus actually. And I'm wondering how soft it's gonna be because the great thing about the Mach 5, what made this such an awesome shoe was that you had the top layer of ProFly Plus, which is the same super critical EVA that you have in here. But then this bottom layer of firmer EVA, it's what help the shoe hold its shape. So almost as similar to what a plate does in a plated training shoe, having a little bit more rigidity. Now this guy isn't gonna have that extra rigidity because it's one piece of a softer foam. So it's not super flexible, but I'm wondering with pushing the pace, with doing some faster work in this, how much bounce back are we gonna get? Because I do think having that firmer layer of foam helped the shoe a little bit. Now, the main draw in the version six here is the rubber. Now, I'm a huge fan of rubber, and I love that they added rubber, because let's just take a look at this here, guys. We completely drove the Mach 5 into the ground. Now, I'm a little bit of a heel masher here, especially on the left side, and you can see that yeah, man, we took all the tread off. So we're gonna get, for the first time, rubber coverage on the mock. But the weird thing, and they did this on the Cielo, is look back here. This is a high wear area. 
this, I mean, you can just see mine where I've rubbed it down. So we are going to get this foam rubbed down. Now, I took this to 300 miles and it is flat. You can still run in it. I don't because once I have a shoe that looks like this at 300 miles, there's not really a point in continuing to beat it into the ground for me. I'd rather, and I think most people will get more benefit out of running in something else that's fresher. But all that is to say, even if we do see the foam go back here, you probably will be able to get 300 miles out of this, depending on how the midsole foam loads up. Now, this deck height in this has gone up. We see 37 millimeters in the heel and 32 millimeters in the forefoot. So they're keeping the five millimeter drop that we saw in the Mach 5. Now, I love shoes with a four to eight millimeter drop because they work really well for most runners' mechanics. 10 millimeter drop shoes, so where the heel is a lot higher, they're gonna be a little bit more awkward for landing up here, but a six millimeter drop or a five millimeter drop like this has, five actually isn't a super common number. That's gonna mean if you land midfoot to a forefoot, you're not gonna have the heel getting in the way. And if you are more of a heel striker, given the stack here, still gonna be super comfortable. Now, the other thing that's interesting about the midsole and what they've done is they've gone with the raised sidewalls here so you can see they've pushed the foam up the side a little bit i'm touching down inside the insole right now and my finger is probably coming down to right here so your foot would sit right at about where this ridge line is and then you do get the nice wrap of the foam so that should create a little bit more of a stable platform here and i've said this a few times recently but stability really is table stakes so if you take a look at the mach 5 versus this these are both decently wide bases it actually looks like the mach 6 might be a little bit narrower but we're still getting that nice flare out and on the mach 5 you could see it was really noticeable how they pushed the foam up and so the mach 5 was a great stable neutral shoe so what that means is there's no prescriptive elements of stability that are added specifically to lock your foot in place if you're an over pronator but they do things naturally with the shoe like the shape of the foam and the width of the foam to make it a more stable ride and just in case you forgot what it was they put mach 6 right there now this is a super clean look of course we got the all white but in general the vibe of the shoe is just light and airy and in the u.s men's sample size 9 it is coming in at 7.4 ounces and in comparison to the 5 it actually lost weight only 0.1 ounce but still it's impressive that they've gone up six or seven millimeters in stack height added rubber and lost weight so we come at these brands all the time for making a change from one generation to the next and adding weight making it less stable hoka has not done that here it doesn't look like they've done anything to mess it up so good job on hoka the only thing i am a little bit worried about and i know some of you guys might be worried about this too is 37 millimeters that is a lot of stack for a lightweight workout shoe and and I have no problem with a shoe having a lot of foam. I like running in 30 millimeter and lower shoes. I like running in 40 millimeter shoes. But in general, we've seen this category of lightweight tempo shoes gaining height. So this is the Rebel, and it went up from 27 and a half to 30 millimeters in the heel. And then even a shoe like one I ran in recently this week, the A6 Nova Blast 4, this guy went above 40 millimeters in the heel. Now, this is a more of a daily trainer with a protective outsole, lots of rubber covers designed for durability and long miles. So it doesn't compete directly with the Mach 6, but I think a lot of people are going to be comparison shopping these two. And I probably should have got one in a different colorway because when I do my comparison video, the thumbnail is gonna look kind of weird. But I think a lot of people are going to be comparison shopping these two because they're both performance running shoes. They're both designed to help you run faster miles and everyday miles. But what the Mach 6 has that A6 doesn't have, that New Balance is starting to get a little bit, that Saucony most certainly doesn't have, is this more cultural accepted brand cachet. So I think a lot of you guys out there might be interested in getting the shoe as a daily trainer as something that you use for everyday miles and how I use my daily trainers is going to the park, playing outside, 
walking the dog. So with that extra stack that you're getting here and with making it a 100% super critical EVA midsole, it just makes it look like more of a regular sneaker versus this dual foam shoe here. If you're gonna get a dual foam shoe, you gotta be a, a running runner. And this presents just another option in Hoka's lineup versus the Clifton, not everyone wants that much stack to be used as a regular sneaker. So that's the frame that I'm gonna be taking with reviewing the shoe and with evaluating it. How does it do as a lightweight, high performance shoe? I will take this thing down to 5K pace, 10K pace, maybe even some mile race pace workouts. I did fast mile repeats last year in the Mach 5. I ran two of my fastest miles of the year in this guy. So this is a series of shoes that can do some serious heavy lifting with running but i also at the same time use this for 10 minute miles with the family and so with the mach 6 i want to know does it still have those performance speed chops and also can you wear it around town because the rebel v4 which is my current favorite shoe can do absolutely everything it's super comfortable for walking. It feels natural and looks good on foot for taking it to the coffee shop. And the foam is really comfortable once it's broken in. And this is also, guys, 80% of that dreaded ethylene vinyl acetate. And so these are gonna be two that we do a lot of head-to-head -head comparisons with. We're gonna get this one up for you ASAP. But you know the way that we do it on this channel. We gotta get some serious mileage in both of these boys on the same day, on the same workout, to see how they perform next to each other. Heading up to the upper here, you got a little bit of padding. It's a bit more padded than the Rebel and some other lightweight shoes, and we do have a structured heel counter. So I know some of you guys, my guy Tim, this really bothers him, and this is the most rigid and rock hard heel counter I think I've ever seen back here. And then, of course, engineered mesh upper, that's gonna get absolutely smoked if we take it to the rain. I might not do a rain test with this. It looks like it's the same rubber that's on the CLOX one, so maybe I'll just use the CLOX one as our rain test shoe. And tongue here is pretty thin and laces are standard. We got a nice slight stretch. They didn't change too much from the upper of the Mach 5. And so the main changes they made here were all things to improve it. They dropped the weight, they added a better foam, they kept the same vibe and aesthetic of it mostly, and then they added rubber. So on paper, this looks like it's gonna be an awesome shoe, maybe even a little bit more versatile because of the additional stack, making it better for long runs. I did take the Mach 5 up to 16 miles, so we'll have to do at least a 16, 18 miler with the Mach 6 at some point. Though I just don't wanna get this thing dirty. <laughs> now, one of the reasons that I'm harping on the foam is because just knowing something is EVA or PIBA almost tells us nothing about how it's gonna perform and how it's gonna last. Another great example is the Brooks Hyperion Max. This is also a super critical EVA, but this is one of the firmest running shoes that I've ever tried. Super critical EVA, which is very soft in the Hoka Mach 5. This was a really nice soft upper layer. I anticipate Mach 6 is gonna be on the softer side as well. Brooks Hyperion Max with the super critical EVA, rock hard. So my goal of this is not to carry the water for EVA or to carry the water for anything Hoka is doing and not using Piva. It is to say that just knowing something is a super critical EVA, that doesn't tell us much. We don't judge books by their cover. We don't judge running shoes by their foam. We judge them by how they run. And that's what we're gonna do in the morning. All right guys, so Hoka is a brand that is known for their comfort. That's what really put these guys on the map in the 2010s is the massive stacks of foam that they started using in their shoes, the Clifton and the Bondi. And that's the reason, quite frankly, we see an A6 Nova Blast with 41.5 millimeters of stack back here. It's wild. Now the Hoka Mach 6 here, this is not a comfort shoe. All of Hoka's shoes are supposed to be pretty comfortable, but that's not explicitly what this thing is for. This is a fast workout shoe. And wow, is this a 10 and a half? This is, yes it is. This is the tightest shoe I have put on in a while. That's crazy. Now my socks are slightly, yeah, my socks are slightly thicker, but I am jammed up. And it's not, it's not the width, it's the length. They might have made this shorter because this is actually a 10 and it fits me okay. Hold on. I 
right, guys. Everyone's sleeping, but I was able to find one clean, thin sock. So I'm going to change into this real quick, and then we'll retry that. All right, I got the Features Thin Sock on now. And let's try this. No, this is most definitely snug. This is a really tight upper. This is the, the you got to go up half a size in here. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this is super tight. I'm gonna, this is just the closest shoe I have next to me. Just to make sure I'm not crazy. Yeah. Okay, Nova Blast. My toe goes up to here. Mach 6. My toe is all the way at the cap. Just visual from the side. Mach 6. We're up here. Nova Blast. We're here. You gotta go up half a size. These are really tight. I might have to exchange them. I haven't had a ten and a half ever feel this tight. It's honestly making me wonder if this one is small. No, this is a ten and a half. These are really small. Alright, I'm gonna try the Mach 5 on now. Yeah, I don't know what they did because in the Mach 5, my foot only goes up to here. And this is a size 10. So they completely changed the fit on these. They changed, They must have changed the last because these are running short. I've never had a 10 and a half run this small on me. And they also have short laces in here. These feel like size 10s because in the, in the New Balance SE V4, when I had a size 10 by accident, they sent me that, they also had these short laces, which I've never had on a 10 and a half. Look, I can barely do my little tie with these. Now, I don't know if this is because the Mach 6 is brand new and the Mach 5 is used, but the Mach 5 feels a lot softer than the Mach 6. And I do remember the step and feel when I tried the Mach 5 for the first time. We got this up in the Cape, I believe at Marathon Sports. I do remember the step and feel. It just felt so soft. And this was the second Hoka I've tried after the Bondi X, which was not a good shoe. So overall, it's a little on first step in. It's a little tight and not as comfortable as the Mach 5. I do think most of you guys out there are going to want to size up half a size also i just walked around a little bit here the rear stack going up is noticeable mach 6 feels a lot taller and the other difference is the backs so take a look at this you can see that the mach 5 extends farther back it's going to add some more stability with the mach 6 they end it closer up and they've also gotten rid of the hoka hoof now hoka had every single brand out here copying them with this little design flare and they got rid of it they had Saucony copying them. New Balance here was copying them too with that little groove. Man, even Asics took a little inspiration from the Hoka Hoof in the Nova Blast. And now in the Mach 6, the Hoka Hoof is gone. That's what you do when people start biting your swag. You gotta change it up. Now you can see even better from the top, but I tried to line up these heels exactly straight. And you can see it looks like the Mach 5 is extending a little bit more. This is just a longer shoe. I don't know what they did, but they completely messed up the fit. Maybe it's just mine, but you got to go up half a size in the Mach 6. Don't be like me. I'm going to destroy my toes tomorrow, all in the name of science. But just even being in these shoes for, I don't know how long I was in these shoes, for five minutes right now, my toes hurt. So we'll see how it is with 12 miles or however long we end up doing in the morning. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'll see you guys then. Actually, one more thing. I know I keep saying that, but I got a little bit of a conspiracy theory on these, but hear me out, okay? What if, because Hoka wanted to show the weight going down from the Mach 5 to the Mach 6, despite the increased stack height, they changed the last on it to make it shorter, at least in the true-to-size variant, so that... In your actual size, so for me I'm a 10.5, but I would need to get an 11 in these to make them fit, it would be heavier than the old version. But they just got some weirdness with the sizing here, so that, oh, a size 9 US men's is 7.4 versus last year or 7.5. But yeah, actually, guess what? You're going to have to wear a 9.5 or a 10 to fit your foot. And then that's going to weigh... Eight ounces. <laughs> I don't think Hoka cares nearly as much about this stuff as we 
hobby joggers do. But just think about that. I don't think if you go up half a size, matter of fact, I know for a fact, if you go up half a size, you're not going to get that weight decrease. So we are not actually seeing a weight decrease from the Mach 5 to the Mach 6. So from this point on, I am not going to say the weight went down. Matter of fact, from the Mach 5 to the Mach 6, the weight went up because you will need to size up half a size to be comfortable. And it's just crazy because I have these in a 10. I don't own any other shoe in a 10. I only got these in a 10 because that's what they had at the running store up there, Marathon Sports. So I got them in a 10. 10s are way too tight for me. This fits like a 10 and this fits like a 10 and a half. I know they used to say Hoka's fit loose. Definitely not in the case here. So maybe they corrected their sizing across the brand, but you got to size up half a size and you're going to get some more weight. I will see you in the morning for the first run. Let's go. All right, guys, another early wake up, 513, let's go. So I'm going to bring the Hoka Mach 6, and then I'm also going to bring to the gym the Hoka Mach 5 with an extra pair of socks, just in case this super tight Mach 6 doesn't fit me. We got the Mach 5 to change into just in case. So let's go. It is a gray, wet, and overall miserable looking morning. So this is why I've been doing the treadmill, is because no matter what it's like outside, that's one less thing I have to worry about. The treadmill and going to the gym, it's consistent. And so if the goal for me is to get the miles in, there's a time for being a hero and there's a time for making a little bit easier on myself <laughs> and just running. So that's why the treadmill is awesome. All right, 525, let's go. Is this how it's gonna be? Saturday, 5 a.m., we the only ones up in here. <laughs> let's go, I love it. Yo yeah, guys, it's day three where we've been here in the morning and they're playing the weird music again. I think they just have this stuck on like a psychedelic 70s, I don't even know what era this is. Some sort of a weird psychedelic playlist though. I've been listening to some weird music this morning myself though. The new Schoolboy Q album, I like it, it's good, but he's in his, he's in his weird bag for sure. The intro is fire though. Bring the da -da 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 -da. So shout out to these Viore pants by the way though. These are the most comfortable pants I've ever had for lounging and sleeper. And that's what these Hokos are supposed to be, right? And that's why it's so odd to me that they made the fit of these so tight. Because this is a brand that prioritizes comfort and cushioning. So why they made these so tight, I do not know. I just slipped both on because I realized I didn't put this one on last night. And I think my left foot is a little bit bigger, but these are both really tight. These are low volume toe boxes. Matter of fact, I'm gonna wear those backup socks just to see if that gives us a little bit more room. All right, we got the features. I think these are like the max cushion or light cushion, features light cushion on. These look pretty clean, what do you think? I also kind of feel like I'm about to go get a Starbucks latte and then go to Bio One as a freshman in college or something. <laughs> I got a sorority meeting in 20 minutes. That's kind of how I feel with these on. But it was only this or the blue, that blue with the green midsole with the gradient. And I feel like I've seen those everywhere online. So I wanted to go with the white. It's kind of fresh. So the plan for this morning, other than me just babbling my head off, is getting 12 miles in on the treadmill. We've been consistent with these treadmill 12 milers in the morning. And Andrew the other day asked me for midlife runner if I was in peak mileage and I was like, nah fam, I can barely hit my baseline. But being consistent over the past three, four days with these treadmill 12 milers, that has mean we may be able to hit a peak this week. So 12 miles, aerobic, listen to some good music and just cruise. So we're gonna be testing these as more of a daily trainer today. Maybe I'll throw in some pace pickup, but that's not what today is about. I will throw some pace pickup in probably in the second run.
We are eight minutes behind yesterday. Yesterday we got on the treadmill at 5.23, but I don't think my watch alarm went off at 5 a.m. So we're five minutes behind, eight minutes behind, whatever, let's do it. All right, we finished another morning 12 miler and let's see what the stats are. That one was kind of a slog today. I don't know why. I was, I guess I woke up f five minutes late and then that kind of just set everything up for being a little bit delayed. So we got to re recalibrate this every single time. I might have to see if I can get one of those pods that you guys have been talking about that make the tracking more accurate. So we got 12 miles, almost exactly an hour and a half and seven minutes and 38 seconds. And so for me, the biggest thing that's improved my fitness is mileage. And for a lot of you guys out there, I know you're doing the two hour long runs already, but these 90 minute runs, if you can work these in as many days of the week as possible, that's gonna help your aerobic fitness become monster and so a shoot like the Mach 5 is perfect for that it's light it's soft it's bouncy I'm really excited about the shoe now the shoe that we were talking about yesterday Socket Endorphin Pro 4 man that one it kind of lost its place it lost its way and let me put my headphones back here and today was also tough because I couldn't find anything that I wanted to listen to that was hitting until I found a Jadakiss Essentials playlist and then that was good, but look at this. This is the motto, up your best. And what that means to me is, be the best that I can possibly be every day. And so that's kind of exactly what the Zoka Mach 6 is doing in this generation. It is elevating its game and making itself the best version of the Mach possible. We got the rubber and we got an upgraded 100% super critical EVA foam. Now I'm gonna walk to the car and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the foam because that's gonna be the key thing. Cloud Monsters, by the way, these are a great beating around gym, hanging out shoe. And I think the mocks, especially in this generation, they're gonna be another great shoe to do exactly what these guys are doing for me right now. All right, guys, we got 12 miles in the Hoka Mach 6. My key fob is outside the Jeep. Now, what made the Mach 5 such an awesome shoe is that it's light, it's fast when you want it to be. It's not super bouncy or anything. It doesn't have a crazy rocker geometry. It has a little bit of a curve here, but it was very easy to run in. Now, this is a phrase that I've been using a lot recently and I'm realizing now what makes a shoe easy to run in. So if we take a look at the Mach 6 here, it's got 37 millimeters of foam in the heel, which about 18 months ago, that would be considered a max cushion shoe. And now we can still call this a max cushion shoe if you want. That's not really what it rides like. It doesn't ride like it has a ton of foam underneath the foot that you're fighting against. It still rides like a lightweight shoe that you can use if you want to do faster running. But the reason that it's easy to run in is because it's lightweight, the foam doesn't feel like it's too much, and that moderate drop. So the moderate drop meaning you got five millimeters of difference between the heel and the forefoot. Anything from four to eight is what I would consider moderate depending on what the geometry is like. This feels like a lower drop shoe. It's just easy to crank the legs. Now, this is a crowd pleasing shoe. I think a lot of you guys out there are gonna absolutely love this thing. And depending on how the durability goes, but with the added rubber here, I think it's gonna be okay. This seems like a shoe that I'm gonna be recommending to anybody who asks me what running shoe should I get as a beginner or what's a good running shoe I should get my husband, wife, sister, brother, son, daughter who just wants to get into running. This is easy to run in, it's fun, it's lightweight, there's no weirdness going on and it's from a brand that's pretty cool. right? If maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when I was growing up in high school and as a kid, Nike and Adidas were the cool brands. Now it's Hoka and On and New Balance to a lesser extent. And this has just enough cushion to be 
comfortable for a beginner runner and not too much where you're gonna feel like you're walking on a weird high heel platform or you're walking around with pillows strapped to the bottom of your feet, which is how the A6 Nova Blast felt a little bit for me. So if we think about the everyday running market, and I addressed this a few days ago in that Nova Blast video, there's a ton of different takes on these daily trainers or everyday running shoes. And that's where this is moving with the rubber, with the 37 millimeters in the heel. This is a shoe that you can use every day and I'll put a ton of mileage on it to verify that, but it's still light enough to use it for faster running. And that's what I look for in a beginner running shoe or in any running shoe that I recommend as a do it all type of shoe. How is it gonna respond to using it every day for a ton of mileage? And also guys, I don't think I've ever gotten an all white or all black colorway. The only reason I got this was because they only had two colorways there in the store and one of them was the blue, which I did not like at all. But this is a super clean looking shoe. It's gonna look great for errands. It's gonna look great for coffee shop. I love what they did with it. And so my one potential concern with this, durability, yes, but even bigger than that is how the foam here is going to perform for longer runs. So anything over two hours, now as a shoe that I would recommend as a beginner running shoe or a do it all daily trainer type of shoe, it isn't a shoe where you're gonna need to do 20, 22 miles in. I will do that because I like doing that in these daily trainers during testing, but most people likely are not gonna be using this as a long run shoe. And if you are watching this channel and have a rotation of shoes, it's likely that you have a Boston 12, a Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, something else that you can do your long runs in so you don't have to use this. But that would be my one concern or drawback. How is this foam gonna hold up for two hour efforts? And today on the treadmill, getting up to about an hour, I did start to feel like, hmm, maybe this isn't the most supportive cushioning. And we do get 31 millimeters in the forefoot, which that's a ton of cushioning. It's just how supportive is this super critical EVA gonna be? And so the reason why Hoka did this whole dual foam setup in the Mach 5 is not because they wanted to just save money or something and add a cheaper foam to the bottom. The whole point of using the standard traditional EVA, which is firmer, is to stiffen up the midsole, add some rigidity, add a little bit of extra protection. And particularly as this top soft foam compresses over time, I felt that the standard EVA was giving me a little bit more protection because the top foam did lose some of its luster within maybe 200 miles. And I think I got an extra 100 miles versus where a lot of people retired the Mach 5 because I was comfortable running with that standard EVA feeling. So we're about to back up in the driveway here. But overall guys, this was an awesome shoe for this morning. 90 minutes, just cruising. This is gonna be a great shoe for those cruise control kind of efforts. It completely disappeared on my foot. I have no complaints about it other than the horrible sizing. And I didn't wanna let that ruin my analysis. I was gonna say that in the beginning, but I don't want to let the horrible sizing ruin my analysis. And I saved it to the end, so it didn't ruin the analysis. But we will get some more miles in this. We got some family time, kids' birthday parties, and then I'll pop back on here I wanna do a comparison between this and maybe the Triumph and some other Max Cushion shoes because I wanna compare how this 37 millimeters and how they're measuring it here is versus some of these other tall stack shoes. So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right guys, it's 3.10 p.m. I tracked down my thinnest socks that I own. Got a pack of these on Amazon a few years ago. I'm gonna see if we can make do with the extremely tight Hoka Mach 6 so I can get my second run in this guy today and just grind it out because I really want to do a run on asphalt today to complete the first run review. Wouldn't be a true first run review without some asphalt. So we're going to test how it is and then hopefully get the second run in with the Mach 6. Man, these are just super tight. I'm still all the way up at the edge. I'm just going to make it work, but this is pretty rough. All right, guys, 412. It's about time for run number two, but I did want to pop these guys on the scale because we didn't do that last night. See how they match up QA wise and then also versus the Mach 5. So left one is coming in at 234 grams. That is lighter than some race day shoes. Hold on. I got to shut off the Google. Hey, Google, stop. Hey, Google, stop. Thank you. Ooh. That looks fire. 
oatmeal bake, and then I think she's making the vegan butternut squash tonight. Thanks, Charles. More bangers from Supwell Kitchen. All right, so left one was 234.5. Right one is 236. That's pretty good QA. And then let's go left Mach 5, 228.5. And then right, 231.5. Guys, this is why I do the weigh-in, because sometimes what the brands give us isn't exactly right. And so these are a size 10, so they're smaller allegedly they're not actually smaller on foot but the size is smaller than the mach 5s the mach 5s are a 10.5 even though they're extremely tight and these are coming in at lighter now look at this i rubbed off a lot of foam here this might be i don't know it's definitely not 10 grams it might be maybe five grams and i'll see if i can go to a dick sporting goods or something and i'll weigh a mach 5 again in the same size but let's say this is around 230 that's putting it as lighter than the Mach 6, which I thought would be the case, guys. So there you have it. The Mach 6 is tighter and heavier than the Mach 5. All right, we got a second run to do, guys. Let's get it in. Another 20-mile day. Let's go. Okay, just kidding, guys. There's one more thing that I want to do before we go out there and run. I said I would get to this earlier, but then I ended up taking a nap after we went to kid's birthday party, which is extremely exhausting. So what I wanted to do was show you the difference in stack heights between two shoes the Mach 6 here and then the Saucony Triumph 20, which on paper have the same exact stack. So Triumph 20, they say this is 37 millimeters in the heel, 27 in the forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop. This guy is supposed to be 37 in the heel, 20 or 31 in the forefoot for a six or 32 in the forefoot for a five millimeter drop. Now let's ignore the drop in the forefoot. Just looking at the rears here and I'm gonna flip this guy around so we can see. You can see just by the eye test, the Triumph 20 has a lot more stack than the Mach 6, but they're both reporting the same number. Now, the reason that might be, there's a few, but the way Running Warehouse, which is, which is where I get my metrics measures, is they go exactly in the center of the heel cup. So that would be right about where the 6 is. And they have this really cool machine. I think I heard a fork around here. So we'll use our fork as our machine. They use this really cool machine that puts this little lever down and then they measure from the bottom of the lever, bottom of our fork here to the ground, how much stack is there. Now, what some of the brands will do is they'll go closer to the back and the way that World Athletics actually does it, and I learned this from Running Warehouse, they go 12.5% off of the back and that's how you get shoes like the Hoka Cielo X1 over there, over there, which evade the legalities of 40 millimeters by doing less stack at that 12.5%. Now, again, Triumph 20, let's do the same thing. Boom, with this, it's gonna be much higher up. Another thing to think about is how much foam we're getting up on the sidewalls, so you can have the illusion of getting more foam under here, and then also how much rubber we're getting. So to me, on the eye test, the Triumph 20 just looks so much more stacked. It also feels so much more stacked. I have no idea how these are both getting reported at the same stack height, even with running where I was doing the measurements. So sometimes guys, the stack height doesn't tell the whole story because this does not feel like a max cushion shoe. It feels much closer to the last generation or even closer to the Rebel V4, which is a 30 millimeter stack height. So I think a lot of you guys out there who prefer lower stacked shoes don't want to run in max cushion shoes all the time for daily miles. I don't think this is going to bother you too much because it still is lightweight. And if we think about the benefit of a lower stack shoe, most of the time is going to be, it's not going to be as heavy. It's going to feel lighter. You're going to get a little bit more ground feel. And this didn't have a ton of ground feel when I was on the treadmill, but you can see here, it does taper up pretty nicely. So we do get a little bit more up in the toes, but most of what you want from a lower stack shoe, you're still getting here with this lighter weight construction, not as light as the Mach 5, but still in that racer territory, sub 240 in my fake size 10.5 US men's. All right, guys, it's actually time for run number two. Let's go. All right, run number two. We're gonna do another eight mile stroller run, get us to 20 miles on the day. And it is absolutely beautiful out here. Spring has sprung in the Carolinas. We got trees budding, we got bushes budding. This is why I love it here. Spring in Charlotte is the best season. Pull up in the Lord shoes. 
What do you think? Should I review the new on? What is it called again? Cloud Horizon. Cloud Horizon. And then what is this? Cloud Surfer, Surfer Trail. Trail from REI. I don't know. I just don't do trails enough. Those look nice though. Yeah, they're hiking shoes. They also just look cool. I would wear those. I would also wear those. Daddy, what did you talk about? We're talking about how the shoes feel and how tight they are. I might have to actually return these, depending on the Charlotte Running Company's return policy, because my toes are all the way at the end. I also have the thinnest socks possible on. See, Whoa. right, they're right up here. Yeah. The way that the way that a shoe should fit. Let's see how our shoes are. Yeah, he's got a little room up here. What you want is usually your toe to stop, like right here. Did my toe stop right here? You got the Crocs on. Yeah, your toes are perfect. Okay, I will put on. So second run of the day, Mach 6. We'll do our normal 8 mile loop with Reezy Boy. Nice aerobic mileage. And what I'm looking for when I do the second run on the asphalt is, are there any differences that get exposed versus the treadmill? Treadmill in general can be a little bit softer and bouncier. So do we still get that nice, pleasant, soft landing experience in these that we got this morning and then of course how is the stability because there's no turning on the treadmill how does it feel when we're cornering around some of these cul-de-sacs and then general vibe any major differences so, all right guys second one of the day hopefully it's not my last ever run in these i really like this colorway too and hopefully it doesn't completely destroy them but we will be back soon let's go All right, guys, 8.23 miles at a 7.44 pace. That's a, that's a pretty good clip for having the stroller with us, man. Now, you guys flamed me last week for mentioning uh, Kadarius Tony's name in that video when I was talking about, imagine being on the field for the Super Bowl. But you know those memes about Pacheco, how he runs angry? I kind of felt like Pacheco a little bit out there tonight. <laughs> Running angry. Yeah, the memes are like... He runs like a toddler trying on shoes. Pacheco runs like he's angry at the ground. All right, from Hoka shoes to Hoka slides, let's get in this analysis. By the way, a few, a few of you guys have asked me about recovery slides. These are the Aura Lux. I absolutely love them. And they're also about 18 months old and they're still going strong. All right, guys, 20 miles in the Hoka Mach 6. Look at this beautiful white colorway. I think we kept it actually pretty clean for the most part. We got a little bit of damage up here. I think the other shoe, where was it? I did see some black piece on one of these shoes here. Ah, I'll find it, but so this is the left shoe here. This is the one that was giving me some trouble. My foot was kind of slammed up against the toe box here, and I still do think you guys should go up half a size, but I put 20 miles on this guy today. I took it outside. I am not gonna return this to the Charlotte Running Company. I don't know what their return policy is, but I'm not gonna sell a lot a local small business, make them have this inventory. I think I can just keep cranking through the summer. This is gonna be a lightweight, great, awesome spring and summer shoe. So I'm just gonna do a super thin sock like we got on today here. And we'll just keep moving with the Mach 6. I was thinking about returning it before I took it outside today but that kid's party, we just couldn't work it in the schedule. So this is so this is a really nice, soft, slightly bouncy, comfortable, not too comfortable for me because I got on the wrong size, but accommodating shoe that is gonna work great for a lot of runners. This is an absolute crowd pleaser and I don't know what type of runner this wouldn't be good for. It's decently stable. It's got enough foam in it to support any type of run that you wanna do. I did 20 miles in it today and it was very comfortable. The only knock against it, and I did find the little piece where we got 
got the black on it today. The only knock against this shoe might be if we are comparing it to the last gen Mach 5 here. Now the main difference in the ride character of these is the Mach 6 is a little bit softer and squishier because they've gone to that 100% supercritical EVA foam. It also to me had a little bit less pop to it. Now with the Mach 5 here, you, look at this. Look how, look how much pop I'm getting when I bend the forefoot in and let it snap back. If I do that same thing to the Mach 6 here, it's... <sighs> It's not, it's not the same exact sensation here. It feels a little bit denser with the 100% supercritical AVA foam. So a little bit less of that pop, but you are gonna be getting more comfort. So like we talked about earlier, you're getting 37 millimeters up in the heel here, which could be interpreted by some as a max cushion shoe. It doesn't ride as tall as say an Asics Gel Nimbus or a New Balance 1080B13, but the stack is there to provide some cushioning. So that's why I'm saying a lot of runners are gonna like this shoe. You could even use this as a half marathon shoe if you're a beginner. It was very comfortable for every single one of my 20 miles today. And there was pretty much no part or no pace that I did with the shoe, no part of any run that I didn't feel natural in. Now, when I picked it up to some stroller strides at the end, I don't know, that might be an oxy moron can you really do strides with the stroller but i do know some guys here in charlotte who do sub 35 minute 10ks at around the crown with the strollers it's absolutely amazing I, there's no way i could do that maybe we'll go for I don't know, maybe Reeves and I will go for sub 40 at some point, maybe this year. I guess this is probably the year because he's going to be too heavy next year. Anyway, did some light stroller strides at the end. Just dropped Reeves inside with mommy, but I was also able to pick up one of these athletic non-alcoholic IPAs. So as I was saying, it's soft, it's squishy, it has a light bounce to it, but as I picked it up into those oxymoronic stroller strides at the end, it's not gonna be the fastest shoe, and I think the Mach 5 still has it for that top end speed. Now, earlier today on the treadmill, I dropped it down to about marathon pace, and out here as I was running the last little bit here, I dropped it down to probably the equivalent of marathon pace, maybe a little bit faster, but we have the stroller, so that is a little bit heavier. You have to put a tiny bit more force to run, and it still does have that pop, and with it retaining the same lightweight as the Mach 5, I know we've been cracking jokes about the conspiracy theory and the size and the fit. Let's just call it equivalent in weight to the Mach 5. It's basically gonna be the same thing on foot. With it having the same weight as the Mach 5, but with a little bit more cushion, I think it's lost maybe 10%, that may be too much, maybe 3% of the top end speed of the Mach 5. Just everything about the shoe, the feel of it, how much foam, the comfort of the upper, how much padding we have around here in the back, how structured the heel counter is, it's not making the shoe feel like a fast shoe so we have different ways we can name this category lightweight tempo trainers up tempo trainers i like to call them speed trainers but we are seeing with this category a lot of blending of speed elements and everyday running elements and so with the mach 6 they are similar to what new balance did with the rebel v4 pushing it in more of that daily trainer direction and as such this is so far to me one of the best daily trainers i've run in so far priced at 140 dollars this wipes the floor with a shoe like the new balance 880 v14 it's often Offering a very similar package to that, but with a little bit more of a roll to it, a much better foam, a much more exciting ride, a cleaner look. But it's still not a gigantic stack shoe. It doesn't feel like a much taller shoe than that 880 V14. So at 140, this is going head to head with the Pegasus, the Ride, that 880, the A6 Nova Blast 4. And I also think in spirit, Hoka maybe wants this to compete with shoes like the Topo Cyclone, the New Balance Rebel. The Rebel also straddles Daily Trainer and Speed Shoe. But to me, I'm feeling that this is more of a daily trainer that I would use for the spring and summer months. So as I think about structuring my training cycle when I'm doing a ton ton of aerobic mileage, slower, that's usually fall, winter, building that base. I'm gonna hit probably 110 to 120 this week. I'm still in a very high aerobic base building period. I want something super protective, but as we're entering warmer months, we're gonna start going fast. Also, as we're entering the end of a training block, it's not just the season of the calendar, but the season of our own training, as we get toward the end of those spring marathon training blocks. For those of us out there who are running a marathon, it's nice to put on a shoe like this, get away from some of those max cushion shoes we've been running in all winter, those very protective shoes, go with something that's a little bit easier to turn over the legs in. And with the Mach 5, that's something I did a lot last year for my half marathon training blocks as I got into August, September, closer to my October race. 
I used this for a lot of those runs where I was dropping it down to seven flat page running 10 miles at that nice steady zone, wanted something super easy to run in. And that's exactly what the Mach 5 did. And that's the same exact thing we're gonna be getting here with the Mach 6, except a little bit less of that pop and more protection. Now the $140 question with the Hoka Mach 6 is how many miles will we get out of this shoe? Hoka Mach 5 here, and guys, I am not a light wearing runner. I typically retire my shoes at or before 300 miles in some cases. I got 309 miles out of this pair, and I think I could get more miles out of the foam. I put them on earlier today, they still felt comfortable, still felt like I got a little bit of pop and cushion left. I just completely ground down the heel back here, but it still feels decent to run in and to walk in, so I do think that this is a decently durable shoe. Now, with Hoka adding the rubber here, except in the back for heel strikers, we're probably gonna get even more durability out of this. So I suspect with the super critical EVA foam, you still can get 300 plus miles. I also know some lighter wearing runners out here in Charlotte. I've seen some of these guys get 500 miles out of the Mach 5. So with the Mach 6, getting more rubber and keeping the same foam, but going to 100% super critical. Ugh. Guys, I don't think, I don't know if it's too, I don't know. I thought it was too early, but I am getting destroyed by mosquitoes. We might have to get the yard sprayed this year. Let me know if any of you guys have gotten your yard sprayed for the mosquitoes. There's Joe's out here in Charlotte. Does it actually work? Because I love being outside, but it's gonna be unbearable this year if it's only March and we're already getting swarmed. This is only our first spring in this new house here, so I'm not sure how it's gonna be. But durability, I'm anticipating we'll still get that 300 miles. I got decent durability out of the Mach 5. And then the other question is, long runs. Mach 5 was not a great long run shoe. I took it up to 16 miles about two hours, one or two times over the summer and it was okay. But with the forefoot here, only having about 20 millimeters of foam, which I know for some of you guys, that's like running in a pair of Tim's or something. That's a lot of cushion for you guys. But for me, that is not too much cushion for a two hour effort. So I'm not sure how we're gonna do with this Mach 6 here. It does feel more supportive than the Mach 5, but it is a little bit of a softer foam, which for me over long runs tends to not be my favorite. It can get a little bit mushy and squishy, and this is completely unpleated. Hoka does have other options in their lineup designed for longer runs like Mach X, even Clifton has a little bit of a more robust construction, more rubber. I think it's a little bit higher stack than this. And then they are releasing another shoe called the Skyflow, which looks very similar to this. Same design language, same swoops in the foam here. I believe that might be a dual foam construction. I'm not 100% sure, but it definitely has some of the super critical EVA in there. And that's gonna be a higher stack, more of a built up daily trainer or max cushion shoe, more of a modern take on the comfort category than the Bondi. So this is definitely not gonna be the long run shoe in Hoka's lineup. Based on my experience with these types of shoes, we should be able to take it up to two hours, no problem, but thinking about getting past that, I would probably add a different shoe into my lineup. And if you are doing a ton of two and a half hour long runs, I would suggest anyway, having another shoe to pair with this as it's not gonna be the most supportive and protective shoe in general. Now, in terms of the stability of this shoe, you'll see we do again have that wider flared foam. Stability was great, cornering was great. Thinking about the upper and the lockdown, Yes, this was tighter, but the lockdown of this was fantastic. Same thing as the Mach 5. I think the Mach 5 might have had one of the best uppers in the game, and they didn't really change the upper itself too much here. Maybe there's a little bit more padding. I could also just be because I've worn down the padding on the Mach 5, but I think we're getting a pretty close dialed in fit here. I have no complaints about the upper at all. It's just go up half a size. I'm gonna, I don't know how to say this. I'll say this however many times I need to for you guys to actually do it, but please go up half a size in this or go into your local running shop and try it on because this is a tighter fit. Okay, so after 20 miles, this is an awesome shoe. It's smooth, it's not clunky at all. That's an issue I've had with some of the daily trainers we've been running in recently where it feels like the heel is disconnected with the forefoot. I didn't get any of that in here. It's got a nice rolling sensation. It's gonna be good for heel strikers. It's gonna be good for landing on your forefoot foot only potential concerns are durability oh we got amazon pulling up what's that uh, yeah it's all good don't worry the only potential concern that we might have with the shoe is durability but i have to say with my experience in the mach 5 
we should still be able to get 300 miles out of this shoe, but if you expect 400, 500, 600 miles, it's probably not gonna be the shoe for you. All right guys, so let me know in the comments what you want to see this compared to first. As always, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all the comments. I appreciate all the support. I will see you tomorrow, bright and early for another video. We're gonna be getting a long run in, so stay tuned and stay healthy. Numbers.